I like church. Let's uh, let's get into our study in the book of John, through the book of John, on, on the seven miracles of Jesus. Uh, if you have your Bibles, open to chapter 9. Chapter 9 starts off with the sixth miracle, of that, which is proof of the Messiah. And the opening scene of chapter 9 is kind of a continuation of chapter 8. Um, when Jesus was, uh, he was, he, they threatened to stone him and he walked out of the temple at that moment. And, and as he's walking out of the temple, chapter 9 begins. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth and his disciples asked him saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents that he was born blind? It, it's likely that Jesus had just, just left the temple Right, he hasn't even left the temple grounds, and and he sees this blind man. Now, blind people were and, and lame and sick were often placed by their families outside the gates of the city or or near the entrance to the temple because uh, they wanted to take advantage of people's good nature and going, you know, the religious people's good nature going into the into the temple. So Jesus sees this man immediately outside, and the fact that Jesus stops to deal with this guy's condition causes the disciples to ask a question. And it's who sinned that made him blind, right? Because this is a predicament. Remember, the, 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 the Jews believed that, that calamity was, was a response to God being angry with you. So uh, God is, you know, must be punishing some kind of sin that made this guy blind. But the problem was this guy was born blind. They all knew that he was born blind. That was a dilemma to them. So they asked the question, who did it? You know, Jesus is going to use this opportunity, and he stops to this man, I think, on purpose to teach these guys a lesson, teach his disciples a lesson. Um, remember the, the, the inside the mind of the disciples when they were feeding 5,000? You remember their response? It says, we need to send these people away because, um, you know, they're, they're hungry. Send them away so they can go fend for themselves. And that's not what Jesus is teaching his disciples. He's teaching them, you know, as he said to them in the 5,000, you feed them, you do something. If you see the need, you take care of it, right? And so here's another person that has a need and all the disciples want to see is that he's just a curiosity. Why, how is he blind? You know, no one said to Jesus, you should heal this poor guy. They just want to know about him. Why did he end up in this condition? There's no concern for making it happen. Go to verse three. It says, and Jesus answered and said, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day and at the night is coming when no one can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He said, neither his parents or him sinned, right? Um, they, there's not a sin that's affected, that caused this thing to happen. Jesus is saying, this has happened so that God can be glorified, so that God can have, have his, his glory can shine through. Now, this may sound like a Christian cliche, but where the disciples saw blindness, Jesus saw an opportunity for God to move. He says, I'm, this happened so that God could be glorified. You know, that's a great outlook for life. Instead of seeing the mountains that block our paths and, and block our way, um, this should change our attitude toward obstacles. We should see them as opportunities for God to, to do something amazing. And he, Jesus told the disciples, he said, look, as long as there's light, as long as there's day, I, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep being the light to this world. He's telling us he can't stop working. He can't stop his call, right? That Jesus had only three years to be uh, in, uh, for his public ministry until he's crucified. And, and he's going to keep working to the very end. So he said, as long as I'm still here, I have to do what I've come to do. Right? And what's the work? He says, I've come to be the light of the world, to be the hope of this world. Right? That's the very statement that caused him in tr trouble back in chapter 8 when he said, I am, I am the light of the world. He who follows me um, uh, shall not walk in darkness. That's one of the reasons they picked up stones because he claimed to be God. He claimed to have the light of God in him. Jesus came to be hope. He came to be light. He came to be, uh, to lead us out of darkness. This blind man has been in darkness his entire life. And Jesus is about to bring him into the light and bring light into his life. He's about to become a living reminder of the very reason God came, Jesus came. Look at verse 6. 
It says, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is translated scent. And so he went and he washed and he came back seeing. Big question everyone wants to know is why, why the clay? Why didn't he just heal him? Why didn't he just say, you know, you're healed and, and send him off? Why did he mix clay? You know, there's no definitive answer. But it reminds me back of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It said, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being. Jesus is not restoring this man's vision, right? He's creating vision. He's never, this man's never had vision. So Jesus is creating vision within him. This is a creative act. And I think that Jesus is, is, is using a, a visual suggestion here to take us back to that, that moment of creation when God made man out of the dust of the earth. And I think he's just giving us that visual picture. Jesus is creating vision out of the dust of the earth, you know? I, and then the next question that follows that all the time is, so why go wash in the pool of Shalom? Well, as we've seen with the other miracles, they were followed by a step of faith and obedience. And I think that's the step of faith and the step of obedience that God is calling this man to have. Go wash, which the man did. And it said, and he came back seeing. He came back to where he'd been begging alms probably for most of his life. And Jesus was gone. He wasn't there anymore. He, they'll reconnect later, but, but he comes back here to the place where he encountered Jesus at the entrance to the temple. And look at verse 8. It says, therefore the neighbors... And those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is this not he who sat and begged? And some said, This is he. And others said, Well, he's like him. And he said, I'm he. And they said to him, How were your eyes open? And he answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and, and said to me, Go wash in the pool of Shalom. And so I went and washed and I received sight. And they said to him, where is he? And he says, I don't know. And they brought him was, who was formerly blind to the Pharisees, who also asked him how he received his sight. He said, he put eye, clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. You know, this is a funny picture. Uh, this man comes back to the place that he's probably spent most of his life in blindness and he's seeing again. And everybody wants to know. First of all, they, they, they're trying to say, well, this is, can't be the guy because he's seeing. And others are saying, well, it looks like him. It's kind of him. And then finally the guy says, it's me. It's, I, I'm the guy. And they ask, how did this happen? And he tells them the story. And their, their question is, where, where is this guy? I imagine some wanted what this guy was given. And his answer is, I, I don't know. I don't know where he is. Jesus gave this man vision. He gave him sight for the first time in his, in his life. This is, this is John's version of, of showing us that the Lord has power over birth defects. He has power to restore and, 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 and build something out of nothing. This man had never seen his entire life. He had never seen the sun. He had never seen a, a, a tree or a flower or his parents' face. And he's given his vision back. God gave him something, created in him something that he never had. And church, that's something that he does in us. He creates in us a life that we've never had. He gives us a new start and a new beginning. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thought. John's telling us this so that we can believe that he's the Messiah. But, but we see this church as a hope. God can create amazing things in us out of nothing out of something we don't have. And he wants to change us. He wants to change us from the inside out. And I pray you're open to that. I pray as we, as, as, as we get into God's word and read his word that you will take it personal as, as a gift from God that he wants to change you from the inside out. He wants to create in you something you've never had. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity we have to know you more, to trust you more, to build our lives on you. 
We give you the glory and the power, Lord, of our lives. We thank you for all you do. We thank you for, for how you minister to us. Lord, we thank you that you create in us a new thing. And you make us something out of nothing. And so, God, we praise you for building us a new life, for building us strength and courage and love. We, we give you the glory. We give you the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, go home. Or go with God and, and, and trust him. Trust his word. Look forward to the things he wants to do in your life and watch him do amazing things. Be open to his hand. All right? You guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.